All right, well, we're back to work on the C6 competition drift car build. We've been hammered down. We've been getting a lot of the big important projects out of the way. There's not that many left. It's a lot of the, the nitty gritty details left and the, the stuff that's tedious and can really make or break a build, but kind of therapeutic at the same time. We've got, we've got a decent bit of work left to do, but we are really homing in on the end here while we wait for our exhaust system to come back from getting uh, header shield service done. So we're just gonna keep the foot, foot to the floor, keep working. Uh, I think we should be able to get this thing done here in no time. So one of the things, biggest things we have left is the chassis wiring. And that is where I'm gonna start today. When Oswe gets here, we'll figure out what he wants to start on. But for me, I've been, uh, I've been raring and ready to go on the chassis wiring. I spent a lot of time figuring out what we wanted, how we wanted to do it, ordering all the right stuff. We've got everything lay it out so we've got our pin out for our pdm we've got our wire links our wire gauge sizes our wire colors everything to start bench building this harness and do it all nice and proper with heat shrink diesel resistant loom and mil spec wire and this is this is going to be a fun one and it's going to be a satisfying project and a big one to get off the chopping block we've done the planning we've done the light work it's time to just cut splice pin crimp build us out a chassis harness so before we started cutting our lengths of wire, we already had these wires that came with our ECU connectors for our inputs and outputs to the ECU. Luckily they came with wires and pins of all different colors. That's the trickiest thing is to get a bunch of different colored wires. You don't want to run the same color wire for everything. It makes diagnosing way more difficult. So I wanted to go ahead and get these kind of branched and batched together and twisted together so that we had them independently, we had them separate, and we had that all organized and out of the way before we dove into the main power carrying stuff that we've got to cut and splice and do all of that. We have, I had Josue write this one. I had my girlfriend write this one. Well, this way, write this one because I have terrible handwriting. When it needs to be a permanent copy, once we've got it all figured out. Anyway, we've basically got our branches. So we've got front, ECU, both outputs and inputs, rear. So our ECU stuff's already sorted. These are our inputs, which are just going to go to the front bulkhead. These are our outputs, which are going to go all the way back to the PDM. So Hostway went ahead and marked out our different links. So one. 66, 70, takes 100, 106, 112. So that way, instead of having to pull a tape measure out, we can just have them hold one end of the wire, boom, cut, boom, cut. So uh, I guess it's time to commit. This wire is pricey, so I definitely don't want to just screw this up, but gotta get, gotta get to it at some point. So we just started cutting our wires one by one, pulling them out, laying them down, figuring out the length, cutting them, and organizing them by section front, rear and then we have these independent sections so the way we decided to do this was to keep each section that needed to go to a specific place organized so even if that's only three wires we're going to keep those wires together if it's 15 wires we're going to keep those wires together and that would make it a lot easier to branch all this stuff so we decided to twist each set of wires together so if, again if it's these three wires we're going to twist these together because these are going to go all to the same spot and then these four wires are all going to go to the same spot we'll twist these together and then the big branches obviously that are all going to go to the same spot we'll twist those together as well and then at the end we'll basically loop the the branches of smaller batches of wires over the big bundle of wires and then that'll make it really easy to branch each thing off keep track of everything and loom everything after the fact now this is not how you do concentric twisting this isn't even a concentric twist this is not how you normally do this that is a way more complex procedure but this gets the job done and keeps everything together all right we've got our individual branches twisted up now this is not how you do a concentric twist that's totally different and uh, a whole lot more involved you have to essentially plan out every branch of the twist your different layers and the idea is you get a, a cylinder so when you shrink it it looks nice now the silly thing to me about that is you know if you don't have enough wires for a certain layer to fill it you put filler wires in there that do nothing which is like the whole point of it is being lightweight but yet you're adding wires that do nothing so, but regardless, it's just on my part, I, as I said before, we're trying to find that balance between doing this as nice as possible, but while not taking way too much time to do it. We're, we're looking for the 80-20 rule here, trying to get as much result without spending three weeks building this harness, if that makes sense. So what we did was we just twisted up each individual branch. So essentially, all the wires that are twisted together are going to the same place. So this big one, 
is going to our rear bulkhead. These are going to go off by themselves. These are our PDM grounds. This is all going to the front bulkhead. This is going from the ECU to the front bulkhead. This one is going to the harness. This other one is going to the wiper slash brake area. Basically, we'll wrap the branches that need to go forward around this main branch. This will be our core essentially. And then it'll be easy to branch them off wherever they need to go. So the rear is gonna be kind of all by itself. It's just one branch right up to the rear. So that being said, now that we've got that done, before we start cutting and pinning and looming and routing, we need to figure out where a couple more things go in here. So we don't step on our own toes and route this wire and terminate it. And then it's in the way of where we need to put something else. So one of the biggest challenges with this build has been staying on track and on top of ordering parts and finding parts and making sure we have everything to do a specific task. I mean, if you have 90% of the parts, but you're missing 10%, it may mean the difference between even being able to start on that project when you were planning to. So that has been a huge challenge. And eBay Motors has been instrumental in keeping us on track, getting us the parts we need, being able to find stuff in a pinch and get it in a hurry. And that's why eBay Motors is actually the sponsor of today's video. So one of the parts we needed was a kill switch. I would got one, I thought it was gonna work great, but unfortunately it's not really designed to work with our PDM and we'd have to do some kind of weird stuff to make it work and really defeat some of the purpose of it. So I turned to eBay Motors, I started looking around trying to see if I could find something else that was better suited and I found the perfect solution. So I ordered this CarTech Solid State XR battery isolator. So this one is designed to work specifically with a PDM. So if you look, this thing is absolutely tiny. And this is essentially our kill switch or what's going to isolate our battery. So in most series, you're required to have an external kill switch. You need some way for a fire marshal, a track personnel to kill power to your vehicle in case there's a fire or an emergency or you're in a wreck, they need to be able to shut it off. Now, traditionally you would have to run your heavy gauge battery cables all the way up to that switch and then from that switch, which ends up with you just running big heavy wires back and forth for really no great reason. Now that's where this solves that problem. So this is a solid state, which means it has no moving parts. It's all electric battery isolator. Our ground is gonna go to this post and then it's going to ground through the body here. And it can switch that on or off all electronically. Again, no moving parts, which means much better reliability. Now the cool thing is we can put this right back by the battery because we have this wiring that goes on here that will run to A, our external switch. So instead of having to run heavy gauge wires all the way to wherever we want to put this, two little 20 gauge wires. The even cooler thing is we can also have this one for ourselves in the car. So I'll have a way to kill, completely kill power to the car, completely isolate the battery from right inside, right within driver's reach. But then there will also be a way for someone to externally shut power off to the vehicle. Now, where this gets really cool and why I'm so hyped I found this just searching through eBay Motors is this one has an extra wire that is designed to go signal to your PDM to shut off. Now what that means is before this completely isolates the battery and hard shuts off all your electronics, it's going to send out a signal to our PDM to say, hey, turn off, give it about a half second to perform its shutdown procedures and then it's gonna isolate the battery. So that's much, much better on your electronics, not hard shutting them off, especially if they're under a lot of load and then you just cut all power to them. So. Super, super cool system. I was so excited to find this on eBay Motors, man. I was like, dude, this is literally the perfect solution. So we need to figure out where we wanna mount this again before we start doing all this other stuff. So we know we're gonna put our batteries back here in this pocket. Not sure exactly where, but somewhere in here. Now, I'd like to mount this in here for a couple of reasons. One better keeps it out of the weather. It is sealed. I'd like to keep it inside. Uh, but two, you know, all the wires really need to stay in here. We're gonna have one going to a button there next to our keypad, one going to a button up here, and one going to our PDM. So it'd be easier than having to try to pass them through the firewall. So to do that, we need to run a battery cable bulkhead somewhere for our ground wire and we need to run one either way for our power wire to come over here to our PDM. So my question to myself is where exactly can we put this and where can we put the bulkheads? Where is this all gonna fit in? And to know that we really need to get the passenger seat in here. 
So I haven't put it in yet, I haven't test fitted it, and I don't really know how much room we have around it. And that's really gonna be the determining factor on where we can put all of this. Now, on top of the seats, there's another thing we need to know where it is, and that is some seat belts, some seat harnesses. So that is another part we found on eBay Motors. We got ourselves some nice impact racing harnesses. So while I was looking around for my battery isolator, harnesses were another thing on my need to order list and I found these on eBay. These are super cool, man. They are really, really high quality. They've got these spring-loaded adjusters here to make it easier to adjust when you're in the car, which is always important. It is so hard to adjust certain harnesses in the car. Uh, so that was a feature I really wanted to get on a harness, but it was hard to find. But I found these on eBay for a good price. They're SFI approved. They're everything that we need in a harness. So we need to get these at least roughly mocked up in there and figure out where we're gonna land the lap belts, where the shoulder harness straps are gonna go, and basically figure out how much room we have outside of all of that for our wiring before we commit to wiring, bulkheads, and all that stuff. So that's what we need to do. Let's get the seat. Get it mocked up on the rails, get it test fitted in there, then we can throw our harnesses in, then we can see where we get to mount our battery isolator. Look at that, how nice that actuation is. Like normally you can't do this. You can't adjust a harness in the car. See how it locks? Oh man, that was definitely worth tracking down ones with that feature. Definitely worth it. All right, check it out. What a snazzy combo, man. I am super, super impressed with the quality of these. Oh, I love them. The, the color combo matches perfect. The hardware is also nice. I love this spring latch, man. That's gonna make a world of difference getting tightened up in the car before a run and then being able to loosen it up a little bit while sitting in grid. That's normally so difficult, which is why I was dead set on getting this style. So they're not the easiest to find, but eBay made it a piece of cake. So with those in, gives us a good idea of what we're looking at for wiring routing. It's definitely gonna be a little bit tighter over on this side than I thought. It's, it's tough. We might have to change our wiring routing up and this is why it's important to test fit, you know, some pieces and parts down the line so you don't end up stepping on your own toes. But looking at all this, we should have room back here to mount the bulkheads and mount our battery isolator about where I was kind of planning. So let's yank the seat back out, start getting that stuff figured out. So I went ahead and started drilling the holes out to mount our solid state battery isolator. Now this is a little bit difficult to get behind the uh, roll cage bars, but we finally decided after all the cutting and grinding to take the PDM out, and then I needed to clean up the surface area. So we're gonna be through bolting this because we need it to make good contact with the body because again, the body of this switch is our ground. So I wanted to grind as much of the paint away as possible so it had 
good connection all the way through, but not so much that you could see it and it looked ugly. So we got it in, we got it bolted down with some nylock nuts, got the PDM back in, and it's all sorted. All right, check it out. Man, I'm, I'm really pumped on that. <laughs> One of those things, I took a lot of debating and then just committed, uh, but that really works out well, right? So we'll have our battery cable negative run up here. It'll go through the bulkhead and then super short run to our battery isolator, and then we'll be grounded here. That's why we ground all this paint off because the battery is gonna ground through this when we have it on and when we turn it off, the battery won't ground. Everything, the battery will be isolated, we'll have no power to the car. So we got our wiring here. This goes out to our inside switch, our outside switch, and to turn the PDM off to give it the signal. So that'll be really nifty. We'll basically click power on right here, right from the driver's seat, then turn our ignition on, start the car. So the, the nice thing about that, having the solid state set up with the two switches is anytime we get out of the car, we can isolate the battery, which would be good practice. But you, you know, if you have to go back to the back or up here and click a switch, you forget and then you get in and it's off. So it just makes it effortless for us to do that. And we don't have to worry about things draining our battery because it'll always pretty much, whenever I turn the car off, we will be disconnecting the battery more or less. So I'm happy with how it turned out. I've got to get some terminal boots for this, for us to make that wire. Um, and we need to wire this in. Again, one of these wires is gonna go to the PDM. So I think the next step is gonna be to start working out our wiring that we got ready over there. Start getting ready to pin that and getting that routed now that we know where all this stuff is. So uh, on the harness front, I'm gonna wait to finalize, install them until we're done taking the seats in and out because both seats will probably have to come in and out a couple more times. So I don't wanna finalize them just yet. But yeah, really happy with how all this stuff turned out, huge. Thank you to eBay Motors for sponsoring this video. It's awesome to uh, work with a company who I've bought parts from for literally my entire life. Like I've been buying parts on eBay Motors ever since I started buying parts, you know? I, I, just, I couldn't tell you how much stuff I've ordered from there and I love it. It's just a piece of cake, makes things really easy to find stuff. And anyway, I could jibber jabber on and on, but it's time. It's time to dive back into this wiring. First step's gonna be to figure out where our branches need to go. So then we'll wrap each branch around and get it set to branch accordingly and then mock it all up. Oh, also, uh, I borrowed a laminator. So I got my 47 pin pin out laminated. I also had my girlfriend redo that. <laughs> so we've got the wire, uh, what it's for, and then the pin on the ECU. I got our wire cut instruction sheet slash wire color label thing that Josue drew out laminated. Got our pin out eh, laminated. Our front pin connector, which I don't know if this is right. I did this late last night. Got that laminated and our ECU wiring harness diagram laminated. So I'm pretty hyped on that. <laughs> I've always wanted to laminate something my first time. All right, I said I'd quit jibber jabber and let's get back to work. So the first step was to lay the core, the bulk of our harness back in the car, get an idea of how we were gonna route it and then tape up little sections so we knew once we started wrapping the other sections around it where they were gonna branch off to go to their different destinations. So with that done, we went ahead and put the bulk of the harness in the vise, the core, and then started wrapping around the kind of auxiliary harnesses that go off in different directions and branching them off where they need to branch off. So that was the idea, basically have it all bundled tightly and then branch. It'll make it really easy for us to loom this after the fact because we won't have to be kind of re-twisting and re-coring the wires every single time a wiring branch branches. So now it was gonna be time for me to start the long, arduous, lonely process of crimping and stripping and pinning all these wires. So while I was doing that, Josue wanted something to work on. So we went ahead and put the front end setup back on the bar, the inner cooler, and the oil cooler, so that way he could start working on the oil cooler lines. These are kind of the last big lines we have coming from the pump to the cooler to the filter, uh, so he wanted to get that knocked out as well. So I'm gonna start pinning my wires into the PDM connectors, getting that handled. Josue was gonna work on our last big set of lines, which is the line out of the pump, into the cooler, out of the cooler, into the filter, out of the filter, into the engine. However, uh, missing a couple fittings we need. I need 10 ORB to 12 AN for here because it's 12 AN. And then for here, I need 12 ORB to 10 AN because we need a 10 AN line for our final line because that's what we can fit going into the block. I don't have either of those combinations. So we're gonna run 12 AN all the way and then a 10 AN line for the last leg of it. So we're trying to put the dry brakes in here as well. The idea here is 
One, if the oil cooler gets damaged, we can bypass it. Two, if it's really cold out and the oil cooler, it's just staying, the car's staying too cool, we could bypass the oil cooler. Just unplug the two hoses, plug them into each other, and then the oil cooler will stay full and ready to go and bled, and then if we need to hook it up, we can. It's kind of the idea, we'll see if it pans out. But, so, since we can't really do that until I get those other little fittings I didn't realize I didn't have, this way's gonna work on our coolant lines, our turbo coolant lines. So we're gonna have one here, as you can see. He's already got this fitting in here. This is essentially our upper, and then we're gonna drill and tap this for our lower fitting. So basically our, our in and our out. So anyway, while he's working on that, I'm gonna start working on this. It's time to commit, start stripping wires, crimping pins, doing all the fun stuff. We got all our documentation laminated. We're ready to roll. So the first step was actually to cut some more wires. So basically these amp seal pins are only able to take up to a 16 gauge wire. Now, our things like our fans and our fuel pumps, we wanna run a 12 gauge wire. We wanna run a heavier gauge wire since they're kind of far away. Now, wire sizing basically comes down to amp draw and distance. So the further you go for a given amp draw, the, the heavier gauge wire you need. So since we're going a bit of distance to pretty much everything in this car, we need to bump it up to a 12 gauge. So we have to cut a bunch of short little 16 gauge feeder wires that are gonna pin into the connector that goes into the smart wire and then they need to step up to 12 gauge. Now, I'm not super fond of this. I didn't, I, if there was another way, I would have done it, but this was really the only way to do it. Now, the old me would have tried to just pin this directly, this 12 gauge directly into the connector, but I know that I'm gonna be worse off doing it that way because it's not gonna crimp correctly because the pins aren't designed to use that big of a wire. So we did the feeder wires. The way I did it was basically used uninsulated butt connectors and slide both pieces of wire to where they were overlapping. So I'm basically crimping them together. I'm not crimping them like a traditional butt connector back to back. So I, I, I'm confident in it. We heat shrunk it. Everything seems good. I think we'll be all right. So it's time to start putting our pins on and uh, twisting in our service loops and all the little tedious odds and ends. You get spoiled by Deutsch connectors. These kind of stamped contacts are always just, they're not hard to do, but they definitely take a few more steps to crimp each one. So it gets a little time consuming. But with all of our rear bulkhead wiring crimped, uh, it's time to start pinning them. So I tried my best to keep basically everything that was gonna go to the rear bulkhead on connector B and everything that was gonna go forward on connector A. There is some crossover both ways, some stuff from A that needs to go to the rear and some stuff from B that needs to go to the front, but that kept it a little better isolated. So I wanted to pin that stuff first. All right, we've got our rear harness section pinned into the connectors. Got that all done and dusted. Pretty happy with that. Um, trying to plan everything out. So for example, these brown wires are for our interior lights. So we've got two coming out. That's because one is gonna go over here and go to the front harness section. One is gonna come off before the bulkhead so that we can put a light strip back here, either on the roll cage bar or up here to light up this area. And then one's gonna go through the bulkhead so we can put a light strip back here. And then basically we'll do the same with the front. We'll split it before the front bulkhead so we can put some lights under here and then it'll go through the front bulkhead so we can put some lights up here. So we're gonna have lights, essentially four branches of uh, lights. So that way, you know, if it's nighttime, we need to work on something on the car, flick the switch and we've got everything reasonably well lit up. Something I wanted to do on the Miata and I never really got around to it, I wanted to make sure we implemented it in this car. And another thing that we're trying to do that I've learned from the Miata is future-proof this thing. So with the wiring, we have two 20 amp extras. So we have one for the front, one for the rear, it's two 10 amp channels together, so 20 amps total. So that way, if we need to run something high current, we can. It's 12 gauge wire, 20 amp. Um, but if we need to run something low current, we can, right? It can't do the opposite. If we just did an extra low current channel, we needed something high current, it wouldn't work. But we can use a high current setup. It'll just be more channel than it needs, but we have enough extras with our 22 pins for the low current stuff. So just trying to plan that out. There's nothing worse than having a harness done and finding something you need to add on later, a nitrous solenoid or some, just some little silly thing. And now you've got to run one wire all by itself or de-wound the whole thing to run one wire with it. So trying to plan out those extras now. So hopefully we don't ever have to do that. We'll see. Uh, you can only plan so far, but my point is I'm jibber jabbering. Uh, next up, we need to do the same thing for the front harness. Basically get it cut to length, get our feeder wires on, get it all pinned in, get our grounds pinned in, and then we'll have everything pinned into the PDM connector, which will be nice. 
Uh, also, Josue went ahead and got the turbo coolant lines done. This took a lot of thought, man. Uh, we really wanted to do it with the hot side on because with the hot side on, there was no good easy route. Uh, the turbo is just in the middle of all the hot stuff, you know? Uh, but I think Josue found a pretty good route to keep them down and away from the exhaust, the header and stuff. There's just gonna be a lot of heat to contend with. So pretty happy with those. They're heat sleeved like everything else. We're just, we're not skimping on the sleeving, you know? Better safe than sorry, it adds weight, but I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So those are done, happy with that. Well, we've, all we gotta do for the turbo now is our feed, which is easy. It's gonna come off this port right here out of the filter housing, dry brake, and then into the top here. So that's pretty well wrapped up. All we really have left on the line front is our big feed when we get those low couple adapter fittings. So cruising right along. But I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering. I'm gonna get back to wiring because it's tedious. It's gonna take some time. So I need to get back to it. So the front wiring harness has significantly more wires than the rear. The rear, it was pretty straightforward. Pretty much all the same stuff. All of our heavy gauge stuff is in the rear with the exception of our brake lights, our tail lights, and our interior lights. Whereas the front, we've got a smorgasbord of different stuff. We've got a couple heavy gauge things, some, some medium gauge things. We've got inputs, we've got outputs, we've got all sorts of different wires, all sorts of different sizes, ranging from 12 gauge that we need to do the feeder wires to, down down to 16 gauge, down to 20 gauge for our input wires. So it definitely took a little more thought, a little more uh, patience to get this all right. So we're, we're trying to go overkill on this. So for example, our intercooler fan wires are only 14 gauge. They're gonna be like eight inch fans. They're probably gonna draw less than 10 amps, but I'm gonna divide them across two 10 amp channels instead of trying to just max out one channel. This race pack smart wire has enough outputs to where we, we, we won't really ever run out. So there's no reason not to kind of spread the load out across multiple channels instead of trying to max out a given channel. What that means is though that we are using a lot of the channels. So that means a lot of wires and a lot of pins. So I get all the pins crimped on. Definitely a little more time consuming with this style pin versus like a Deutsch pin. You get a little spoiled by those. Um, but once we have them all crimped, it's time to put our service loops in. So these are basically little loops before the pin goes into the connector. And the idea here is that they provide strain relief. If you pull on the wires, it'll kind of pull on the loop. The loop acts as a little bungee to give you some cushion, and you have a little bit of wire length in hand if you ever had to take it apart and re, you know, put another pin on it or something like that. That's why they're called service loop. If you ever need to fix something, you have a little bit of wire left over. You're not already maxed out. So we get those all pinned in, a little tedious, a little time consuming, but we get it done, and now it's time to route the harness in the car and see if it all still fits. It's a big question mark. We just measured this with Smaller wires, will it fit in practice? I don't know. All right, wiring harness is in, it fits, it ships. I'm really happy with this. So we've got our rear section, so we can run it up next to the PDM and then up to a bulkhead up there, or we can run it along with this one, bring it up next to these coolant lines and punch it through about here. That would put us, you know, right here. So either here or, you know, up here. I think this is kind of uglier, but it's a simpler route right down to the fuel pumps and right to the fans. But from here, it'd be nice and low, fuel pumps, fans. So I don't know, we gotta decide on that. I made it extra long, so we could go up there. If not, we can go up here. We'll just have to cut it shorter. The front section comes up here, tucks up here, splits off here to go up to the ECU wiring harness, splits off here to go up to, this will go to this ECU connector right here. This will go to the ECU connector and then to the bulkhead. This will go to the bulkhead. And then this branch goes off to the wipers and down to the brake light switch. We have power to the wipers and then we're gonna wire in the park switch. So when you turn the wipers off, it won't turn power off until they stop at the bottom, which is something I didn't do on the Miata and I regretted it ever since because it's so annoying trying to get them to stop at the exact spot. Uh, but yeah, so really happy with how this turned out. We'll sleeve it. Boom, boom. Uh, we do have a few stragglers that just have to be here. So these are grounds for the PDM itself, right? So it can power up, it needs power and ground. Uh, the, this is gonna go up to the solid state battery isolator. That's what's gonna turn it on or off. Um, and then this one is for interior lights. So we need to loom this, pull this back out now that we know it fits, loom up what we have before we start terminating into our bulkheads and our ECU connectors and all that. So we still got some work ahead of us, but we've got the main, the main, the bones 
of the chassis harness done. It looks good, everything fits, everything works. Well, we don't know if it works yet, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, we'll keep chugging along, but we've got some other work to do. We're gonna have to call it, unfortunately. So uh, we got some drifting, some shop stuff, so I hope to see you guys for that, and then hammer down back on this thing. Should they have the exhaust stuff back here soon, around the time we're able to work on it again? I don't know, hopefully it all pans out. But for now, that's gonna be it. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye.